I only told her my stories of the places I've been, of the trauma, the drama, the things that I've seen, the far away, the exotic. It all seeped into her heart. That's the only voodoo I do. You can't keep us apart. Did you know, Mr. Shakespeare, for no one is sure, when you decided to draw Othello as a moor, that his blackness, his otherness, would always raise queries about whether the play's racist, and other such theories pertaining to your own true thoughts as the writer, the drawer, back in Elizabethan times, which of course was before all these histories of trauma, inequality, migrations that have amplified difference, magnified segregations, traded souls across borders, constructed black and white as the slave, and the master, the weak, and the might. So some say you couldn't know when you drew your hero back, back in the 1600s. But it wasn't quite ground zero, because I read in the Cliffs notes that back then England's queen proclaimed her discontent at what she had seen as a swarm of negers and blackamoors who crept into the realm to the annoyance of her people. So in taking the helm against these aliens, mostly infidels, consuming relief, she made this guy Casper, who was a merchant, the new deportation chief. So, Mr. Shakespeare, though the slave trade hadn't yet turned hearts to stone, it could be argued that as humans we've always been prone to attacking those weaker or darker or different or fearing the other or marking their descent. In your own words, Mr. Shakespeare, you pose black as the devil and create characters who speak race at an astounding level. They describe Othello as devil, lascivious moor, black ram. You evoke prejudice at every turn and your hero is damned by Brabantio's accusations. There's no way his white child in her snowflake white purity could ever be beguiled to seek the sooty bosom of such a thing as Othello. He claims witchcraft or voodoo, black magic, but Hello, you then subvert the whole thing with the poise and the grace that you give to Othello. He stares state straight in the face and says, I only told her stories of the places I've been, of the trauma, the drama, the things that I've seen, the far away, the exotic. It all seeped into her heart. That's the only voodoo that I do. You can't keep us apart. And it made me think a little of the art world's view of the other, as I am a brown female who has yet to discover how to to be in the mainstream of the art world's white male tower. They like my stories, but from a distance, those great titans of power. Anyway, Mr. Shakespeare. James L. Jones performed Othello's speech about voodoo to Barack at the White House. It's on YouTube. And you knew so well back then how to write for the other, how to give credence to difference and give words to a brother. So I can see why this role garners so much attention. It's a role any black actor worth his salt hopes to mention. But wait. Mr. Shakespeare, back in your day, there were no black actors or women playing your treasured roles, only white ones. Nicholas Burt, Edwin Forrest, Edmund Keane, Ira Aldridge was black, but some found that obscene. What is obscene to me is how recently blackface was banned in Othello. It's a total disgrace. Let's give thanks then to Paul Robeson, who finally brought to the part all the honor, the grandeur, the valor of heart that you wrote into your art that has bewitched generations with its twists and its nuance and its reverberations. It is the crossover of nation that makes Othello the most coveted role for a black actor because it comes from somewhere way, way down deep in the migratory soul. So, dear Mr. Shakespeare, did you choose the dark charcoal for his, I quote, sooty skin to make a point about race and who can, who does, and who should fit in?